Hello all, so in this video we're going to carry on talking through how we can plot in ticks. If you remember in the last video we talked about how we can draw lines and the basic premise behind how ticks picture can work. Um, so in this video we're just going to kind of carry on with that with some more basic plotting commands. So once again I've still got my grid on the right hand side and my grid is a 5x5 five five grid starting at 0, 0 in the bottom left and 5x5 five five in the top right. So let's try and plot some points on this grid. So what I'm going to do is come over to my source code. I'm going to type the draw command and let's start by drawing a circle, let's suppose. So I'm going to draw a circle at, let's suppose, put it at 1, 1. So I'm going to try and center the circle at this point here. And I'm going to tell ticks that I want it to be a circle. And then I'm just going to use my square brackets to define what the radius of that circle is going to be. OK, so I'm just going to go radius. And let's make the radius equal to one unit. OK, so if I compile that, you should be able to see on the right hand side a circle centered at the point one one that has a radius of one unit. Well, what I can do is actually use this to um, specify this as a point. So maybe if I make the radius a little bit smaller, maybe make it point one um, of a radius instead. So if I compile that, then this circle will be made smaller and it should be closer to what looks like a point. So maybe if I wanted an open point, that would be totally fine. But what I'm able to do is actually use a different command to fill that circle in. So if I literally just copy and paste this command, at the moment, what the draw command does is it just draws a line and you can see just the outline around here. If I actually want to fill what I've just drawn, what I can do is change this command from fill to, sorry, draw to fill. And then again, if you look down here, what will happen is that circle will now be filled in. But you notice that it's still going to have this circle as an outline. So what that means is that if I come next to where it says fill, I can change various different colors, for example. So if I put my square brackets in next to where it says fill, and if I change this to maybe be a gray, then what you'll basically be able to see is around the outside, you'll see it's drawn in black, but then it's filled with a color of gray. Now you notice that we've got the package X color installed, which means that I can actually define whatever color I like. In fact, I can actually define RGB colors because I've got that package installed. Perhaps that's a video for another time, but just be aware that I can pretty much put whatever color I like in here, okay? So what else can I do then? Well, along the same kind of lines, let's suppose I wanna draw a rectangle um, starting at the point one one, and let's, ma let's, maybe it's a, uh, let's maybe make it a square instead of a rectangle, so a unit square. So again, what I can do is I can go draw, I can start at the point one one, and then just like before, I can actually define um, lines, so I can literally join lines together. So if I go one one, put my line command and draw the end of that line in, so maybe let's make that two one, but instead of this just being a single line, I want to make it a two dimensional shape. So what I can do is actually just carry on going. So from two, one, I'm going to draw another line to the point two, two, and I'm going to draw another line from there to the point one, two, and then going to draw another line back to the point one, one again. Okay. And again, I'm going to execute that with a semicolon. If I go recompile, you'll be able to see a square on the right hand side that starts at the point one, one and goes all the way round as such. So again, just using those line commands, I can absolutely draw them together. Again, I can sort of change various different parameters about this line. Now, what's important to note is that you see down here, maybe if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that actually those lines are drawn above the circle that I've just drawn. That's just because the order matters over here. So literally, uh, Tick's picture will compile things from top to bottom. OK, so because I've asked it to draw last, it means that that's going to come in on top of my circle. If I didn't want it, if I want it the other way around, very simple. I just put my rectangle or the square that I've just drawn uh, first. And then you should be able to see that that circle comes in above that uh, as requested. So just using those line commands can actually be quite powerful. Now, just be aware that there are different ways of drawing exactly what I've just drawn there. For example, if I get rid of those uh, lines and just use the point one one as a starting point, I could absolutely use the command as a rectangle to start at the point one one and then go to the point two two. So if I just type rectangle two two and then go recompile, it'll pretty much draw exactly the same thing, okay? But the advantage of doing it this way is now if I wanna fill that rectangle in, so again, if I just copy and paste that command, change from draw to fill, and maybe I might wanna fill it with a light gray instead. In fact, no, because I've got my 
grid as a light gray. Let's maybe make it blue. Let's make it a bit more funky. So if I change that to be a blue, again, you can see my rectangle still got an outline in black, but its fill is obviously blue as such. Okay, so again, you can start to see how we can start drawing some quite interesting things here. So the last thing that I'm going to show you in this video is about how we can draw arcs. So we talked in the first video about how we can draw lines. We've just seen how we can put points and maybe different two dimensional shapes just by defining the different vertices and then drawing lines between them. But now let's think about how we can draw arcs or curved lines. So before I go any further, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to define a point. So I'm just going to type here coordinate. I'm going to give the coordinate a name, so I'm going to put that in my uh, ordinary parentheses, so I'm going to call it point A, and I'm just going to type the word at, and I'm going to put the coordinate A at 3, 3, okay? Now, this isn't actually going to do anything. If I recompile it, nothing is going to happen. All I've literally told LaTeX to do is just say, look, uh, the point A is going to be at the point 3, 3, so I don't have to keep on typing the coordinates 3, 3 every single time. So now let's actually draw an arc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pipe draw again. Um, but this time, instead of putting drawing it at 3, 3, I'm just going to type draw at A. OK, so then I know that that's always going to be defined. This is particularly useful if you're going to be using that point over and over again, or if you're playing around and if perhaps you just want to change the instance once, you can just change it here rather than having to go through a code and changing it everywhere. OK, so it's quite a useful little trick there. So I'm going to draw, starting at A, an arc. Now, the thing which comes next, I'm going to put my parentheses in, the things which come next are a little bit more awkward to think about. So I'm just going to type them first of all. So I'm going to go 30, I'm then going to put a colon, I'm going to put 90, and then I'm going to put a colon and I'm going to put 2. And I'll talk to you about what these parameters do, so what the A does and what the 30, 90 and 2 means in just a second. But if I recompile it, you should be able to see on the right hand side now, I get an arc. Now, if you're looking at that going, OK, that's fine, I get an arc, but what do those numbers mean? Well, let me try and illustrate it with a sketch. So actually, let me pull this in um, over here to just try and show you. So again, I've got my command along the top. So I've got draw. I've got the spaces um, where I put something here. I've got arc and then I've got three spaces where I'm going to put my parameters. So the first thing that I defined was obviously my point. So the point A, so you can see my point A is being drawn here. That's the thing which I'm going to start from. The next thing which I had to define was actually the radius. So the radius was the thing that came last in this second bracket. So it had sort of something, something, and then the last number was basically my radius. What that literally does is it chooses all the points which are a radius. So in the case of the example I gave, it was two. So it's a distance of whatever that radius is from the point A. Then what I did is I defined a start angle. So the first number in that second bracket is the start angle, and this is in terms of degrees. So what it's done is it's chosen a point, which is whatever my radius is away from point A, such that the angle from the horizontal is whatever my start angle is. So in the case of my example, it was 30 degrees. So you can see that it's formed a horizontal line, that's P0 to P1, and it's chosen a point P0 such that the angle from the horizontal is 30 degrees away from A, more or less. Okay, so that angle there is where my 30 degrees comes from. So it's basically found a point P0 there. So basically what we've done here is we've chosen P0 to be the center of my circle. And then clearly, uh, this is obviously a horizontal line, so P1 and A, which is the point which I gave originally, is on the circle. And obviously this is a circle of whatever the radius is given as. And then my last parameter that I've given is the end angle. So the end angle is again measured from this horizontal line, the same horizontal line that my start angle was measured from. I think in my instance it was 90 degrees and it's literally found me the second point which is that end angle away from this horizontal line as such. And then basically what it's done is it's drawn an uh, arc between the point which I've given and this second point P2. OK, so that is how my arc is constructed. Basically, there's four parameters that I need to give. First of all, my starting point. I then also need to give the radius, which tells me how far I want the center of the circle to be away from my starting point. I need to give the start angle, which tells me what angle I need to move from the horizontal to get to the point A. I then also need to give my end angle, which is literally the angle that I move through from that horizontal line to get me to the second point. And that's how my arc is formed. 
So it's fairly complex. It's a lot of parameterization going on. To be honest with you, and a bit of heads up and advice for you as well, I tend to just keep that start angle at zero because then that basically means that A is literally the point P1 and it just means that my end angle is the only parameter that I care about. So it's literally saying, okay, start at more or less this point down here and then just move to what angle um, I need. Okay, so it's easy just to visualize if it's starting at angle of zero. But if you do need that extra level of control, and perhaps there are some instances where drawing this may be more useful, then you can absolutely specify a start angle like this. So if I come back to my angle or oh, my diagram, you can see that point A is the point 33. It's literally gone 30 degrees. So it's probably some point down here, which is two units away from that point over here. And then it's literally moved 90 degrees up from there. So again, that's how I formed that, that arc there. Okay, so hopefully that's useful with regards to drawing arcs. Again, just like we had with our lines, I can change any of the parameters of my um, arc. So for example, if I want to actually just draw it as an arrow, I can absolutely do that just by changing the arrow command. And again, I've got all of the different parameters that I showed you in the last video, but more or less, that's how I could draw a curved arrow if I wanted one.